Hello guys and welcome. In this video I will be showing you the new method to have custom firmware on the SysNan of your modded Nintendo Switch. I'm uploading this video because my method to have CFW on your SysNan that I have on my channel is outdated and you should not follow that video anymore. This method not only allows you to have custom firmware on your SysNan, but also allows for overclocking your Nintendo Switch system with ease thanks to NX Venom. I will be showing you the process to install it and at the end I will be showing you how to configure your Switch for overclocking. Without further ado, let's begin. The first thing that you're going to do is go to the description of the video and download the latest version of NX Venom. At the moment, the latest version is 7.0.0. Scroll down and download nxvenom.zip. Once you've downloaded it, extract it, and you'll see a folder called NX Venom. Open it up, and you'll see its contents. Now, it's moment to plug in the SD card of your Switch, either via a USB adapter or via Hecate mass storage. Once you have your Switch on your PC, this is the tricky part. This is going to be a clean installation, which means you have to delete some folders. The way I do it is keeping only two folders, the Nintendo folder and the MUMMC folder. The rest of the folders and files have to be deleted. Why, you may ask? The reason for this is because some programs, some homebrew and some other software have different compatibility and usually whenever you just drag and drop a version of a new version of atmosphere or hecate or whatever else it tends to conflict with old files and it's really difficult to know exactly which files have conflict so it's just better to delete all of them and do a clean installation now if you have save files, emulators, ROMs, or anything else on your Switch that um, is related to custom firmware or other homebrew apps, you have to do a backup on your PC. And then, once you drag and drop the files from NX Venom, you can just restore them and that would be pretty much it remember to do backups of important things that you may or may not have on your switch however do mind that if you do not delete any of these two folders your games will not be deleted that's why these are the only two folders that remain now i'm not going to do it because i already did it but you have to do it if you do not already have the newest version of Annex Venom. And this is the way I update my Annex Venom version every time a new one comes out. So that way I don't have any kind of problems installing the new version. Now, once you've done this, you have to reboot your switch or turn it on and we'll proceed there. And actually, before we proceed with the switch, I did want to add an extra step to the installation process. And this is specifically for the people who want to play Overwatch and Apex Legends online with overclocking. And this is because NX Venom by default enables some options inside atmosphere slash config slash system settings dot ini that disable certain friend services so the your friends 
you won't be able to see them as online and you won't be able to um, add them or join their party. And I'm not sure if this is the case for other games, but it certainly is the case for Overwatch and Apex Legends. So what you want to do is I'm going to leave you a file called systemsettings.ini that enables those friend services back again. And the only thing that you have to do is copy, go to atmosphere config, then paste, replace, and that way you will have the friend services activated and you will be able to see your friends online. Now, the things that you're going to notice when you boot up the switch for the first time with NX Venom are a following. At launch, you're going to see the three options that you usually see on Hecate, CFW, CFW, CSMMC, and Stock. But you also will be noticing that on more configs, you will see two options, which are the regular Emunand and Cisnand, but without the overclocking. I'll explain what to do with these later. Now, before you boot into any of the, op of the options, go into console info, HW and fuses, and please take a picture of this screen. I'm going to explain exactly what to do with it later. Just uh, save it somewhere and have it handy. Now, on more configs, it's the no overclocking options. And these are mostly used for troubleshooting and I personally use it to configure the overclocking of the switch every time I update NX Venom for the first time. So let's go ahead and boot up the SysNAND, wait for it to boot up. And we will be configuring overclocking for our system. Now that it's booted up, let's go ahead and open overhand by pressing down on CR, CL, D-pad down. Press right on the D-pad for the packages menu. Press on SC Wizard, configure, and this part right here is going to vary from switch to switch. In my case, my model of switch is a V2 Miracle model, but you may also have a V1 Arista model. The V2 switches are the ones that released after 2019, which are the regular switch, the Switch OLED, and the Nintendo Switch Lite. I'm going to be leaving two guides in the description. You have to look up your Switch model and follow exactly the configurations for each. You're going to see on CPU, GPU, and RAM a bunch of options that you have to follow the guide for. And if you see any option that doesn't appear, that does appear here, but not on the guide, just leave them as default. Beware of crashing um, on, on, at boot, which it's really common, and it's usually related to RAM, means that you have to change options in the, in the RAM, uh, uh, configurations in the RAM. If you have any issue with it, just shoot me a DM on Discord or join the Discord server that I have on the description and we will be able to help you. Now, the RAM part, you just, uh, you just gotta follow the guide uh, up until here. And then the rest of the things, you have to just scroll down to timing presets. And this is what where we're going to be using the screenshot that I told you to take uh, on Hecate. Because in that screenshot, it's going to be showing the brand of your RAM. Why? Because each RAM, um, each switch is different. 
And in my case, my brand is Samsung and the model is AMMGCJ. These are the RAM timings. And every single switch has a different RAM timing that is going to be suitable for that console. And that's the reason why we need to be aware of our brand and model for our RAM and simply use these presets, which will grow, which work perfectly in my case. Um, just press A and you're going to see done. Once you've done all of that, you just go, you just return to the configure menu and click on complete. You're going to wait um, for the console to reboot. You're going to press volume down for Hecate and now we're going to launch and we're going to just launch the SysNAN CFW like normal. And finally, you have configured your switch for overclocking and it works like a charm. Again, if you have any questions, shoot me a comment down below and DM me on Discord if you have deeper questions or a very specific problem. And also join the Discord server. They are filled with a lot of people that can help you and including the developers of most of the homebrew programs that are used for overclocking. Now, without further else to say, I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.